In the fall of 1964, the Air Force began testing the XB-70 Valkyrie, a futuristic bomber designed to outpace any fighter jets and ride its supersonic shockwaves. This advanced aircraft was meant to revolutionize America's bomber fleet, but its development faced many setbacks. By the mid-1950s, as Cold War tensions peaked, the US and Soviet Union developed long-range bombers. The US introduced the B-52 and the supersonic B-58, but both had limitations against Soviet air defenses. Sure, the B-52 could reach the Soviet Union, but it was too slow to evade the newest Soviet interceptors. Meanwhile, the supersonic B-58 was fast enough, but lacked the range and payload to be effective. The Air Force desperately needed a new kind of plane to outrun anything the Soviets had. In 1955, many doubted if such a plane was even possible. This challenge called for some pretty wild ideas, like using nuclear power to extend range, or exotic high-energy fuels to boost jet engines. The most practical idea at the time? An aircraft that cruised subsonically most of the way, then ditched part of its wings and fuel tanks to make a supersonic sprint to the target. Aviation technology in the 1950s was advancing at dizzying pace, with rapid progress in aerodynamics, engine performance, and new materials. This meant the dash concept could be set aside for a design that cruised supersonically for its entire mission. In 1957, the Air Force embarked on developing a next-gen bomber with ambitious goals. This new aircraft needed to fly three times faster than the B-52, soar 25,000 feet higher, and carry a similar payload over the same range. Top aircraft builders, Boeing and North American Aviation, were invited to compete with their designs. Both submitted radical concepts with sleek delta wings optimized for supersonic flight. Everyone expected Boeing to win since they'd built the iconic B-52 and other famous bombers from World War II. North American, on the other hand, was the dark horse in this race. During development, North American engineers stumbled upon research that gave them a huge edge. They found a little-known report about something called compression lift. When planes fly faster than sound, shockwaves usually spread out from the aircraft. But if these shockwaves could be directed under the wings, they could generate extra lift. Using this trick, North America's design promised more efficient flight at high supersonic speeds. The Air Force was seriously impressed, much to Boeing's surprise, in 1957, North America's design was picked for development. This new bomber was named Valkyrie and designated as the B-70. Engineers used cutting-edge tech to create a 270-ton beast that could outrun fighter jets. Six after-burning turbojets drew air through a complex intake system to achieve this incredible feat. These engines were finely tuned for peak efficiency at high supersonic speeds, they were so powerful that the Valkyrie could still cruise at Mach 3 and finish its mission even if one failed. Aerodynamics played a crucial role too. Compression lift gave the Valkyrie one of the best lift-to-drag ratios of any manned aircraft. Its variable geometry wings added to its performance, enhancing its stability and compression lift. On takeoff and landing, the wings could be fully extended. At low supersonic speeds, they angled downwards by 25 degrees, and at high max speeds, a full 75 degrees. However, flying at three times the speed of sound meant the airframe would endure such intense kinetic heating that it would soften ordinary aircraft aluminium. Engineers developed a groundbreaking fuselage skin and circulated fuel throughout the airframe to cool the aircraft's interior. Even at 75,000 feet, the Valkyrie's cockpit was fully pressurized, boasting an innovative encapsulated escape system. This meant the crew of four didn't need bulky flight suits, allowing them to be airborne in just 20 minutes. The Valkyrie could deliver a nuclear payload anywhere in the world in mere hours, showcasing performance that was truly extraordinary. It embodied America's strategy of deterrence through strength. The first experimental XB-70 prototype was revealed in May 1964, with flight testing scheduled for the following months. Soon, it will be joined by second and third prototypes already under construction. From the start, it was clear things wouldn't go smoothly. Initial ground tests revealed so many technical issues that the first flight was delayed for months as engineers tackled many problems. Finally, on September 21st, the XB-70 was ready for its maiden flight. Cheers erupted as the futuristic bomber lifted off for the first time, but the celebration didn't last long. A hydraulic leak prevented the landing gear from retracting, and soon after, one of the engines surged 
and had to be shut down. As the prototype came in for landing, a brake locked up, causing a tire to blow out and catch fire. Just as one problem was fixed, more seemed to crop up. On October 12th, the XB70 broke the sound barrier for the first time, just nudging past Mach 1. As flight tests continued, the paint started peeling off the fuselage and control surfaces, leaving the aircraft looking like it had been through a sand blaster. The paint was patched up and the XB70 aimed for higher speeds. But with each test flight, faster speeds brought more severe issues. On its 12th flight at Mach 2.6, the horizontal splitter tore off and was sucked into the engine duct, knocking out four engines. The pilots landed safely, but all the engines needed replacement. Finally, on October 14th, the aircraft was cleared to reach Mach 3. However, just two minutes in, a large chunk of the wing's leading edge broke off, forcing another emergency landing. After that, the first prototype was limited to Mach 2.5. Developing such an advanced aircraft came with setbacks, but a bigger problem loomed. From the start, there were doubts about the Valkyrie's safety against Soviet air defenses. Surface-to-air missiles introduced in the mid-1950s were becoming the top method of guiding airspace. By the 1960s, the Soviets had thousands of these missiles, capable of hitting targets even at the XB-70's altitude. The late 1950s saw the rise of ICBMs, which could deliver nuclear warheads more quickly and cost-efficiently. In just a few years, missile technology made the world's most advanced bomber almost obsolete. With the XB-70's strategic value in doubt, engineers rushed to find new uses for the plane. They sketched radical ideas, transforming it into a missile launcher, an aerial launch platform for spacecraft, or even a supersonic refueler. One proposal even suggested converting the bomber into a Mach 3 supersonic transport. These ideas, however, proved too ambitious. The program was dramatically scaled back and eventually reduced to a minimal research project with just two aircraft. Despite millions already spent, the program pressed on. In 1966, NASA teamed up with the Air Force for flight testing, using the prototypes to gather valuable data on supersonic flights. By then, the second prototype had shown a much more capable plane. On May 19, 1966, it reached speeds beyond Mach 3, cruising at three times the speed of sound for over 90 minutes. After nearly a decade of developments, one of the world's most ambitious aircraft was finally living up to its promise. But then, just weeks later, tragedy struck. On June 8th, the second prototype joined four other aircraft for a formation flying photo op. Minutes into the flight, without warning, one of the trailing planes collided with the XB-70, instantly destroying it and severely damaging the Valkyrie's vertical stabilizers. For 16 seconds, the Valkyrie flew straight and level before spiraling back to Earth. In those few moments, two test pilots and a billion dollar aircraft were tragically lost. This devastating setback forced NASA and the Air Force to continue their research with less capable original prototype. The XB-70 was an engineering marvel. Though it never joined America's bomber force, it left a lasting impact on the Cold War. The Valkyrie project had a profound impact on aviation technology. It introduced innovative design concepts that would influence future aircraft. For example, compression lift was groundbreaking, allowing the aircraft to generate additional lift by directing shockwaves under the wings. This principle would be explored further in subsequent aircraft designs. Moreover, the materials and cooling systems developed for the XB-70 paved the way for advancements in high-speed flight. Despite its challenges, the XB-70's development provided invaluable data on supersonic flights. The research gathered during the program contributed to the design of the Rockwell B-1 Lancer, a low-altitude penetration bomber. The XB-70 also indirectly influenced the development of the Soviet MiG-25 Foxbat, a high-speed interceptor designed to counter the Valkyrie's capabilities. The XB-70's legacy extends beyond military applications. The knowledge gained from the program aided in developing commercial supersonic transports, such as the Concorde and the Topolev Tu-144. These aircraft benefited from the aerodynamic research and material science advancements pioneered by the Valkyrie project. The XB-70 Valkyrie remains a symbol of Cold War ingenuity and ambition. Its story is a testament to the relentless pursuit of technological advancement despite the inherent risks and challenges.